Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to Come video, we're going to be tackling Threadripper, specifically some news which has popped up, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours. As we approach the launch of the processor, there are a couple of things that we should take into consideration. One of those is cooler compatibility, so we'll start with that one first. AMD have a tally so far of what coolers will work with Threadripper. This is confirmed, and these include Corsair, Fractal Design, Cooler Master, and a few others. I'll pop them on screen, but I'll also quickly read them out. Freezer 33, Liquid Freezer 240, and 360 from Arctic. Cooler Master, you've got Hyper 212, TR Edition, and Master Liquid 240 with Corsair. The H8, the H80i V2, the H105, the H100i V2, and the H115i with Cryorg, the A40, the A40 Ultimate, and A80. With EVGA, you have the CLC280, Fractal Design, Celsius uh, S24, and Celsius S36. With Next, uh, Kraken X52, X61, and X62. And finally, Thermal Tank, you have Water Free Ring RGB360, 280, and 240, Water Free Ultimate, and finally Water Free.0 Extreme. So if you are looking to buy one of the Threadripper lineup of uh, processors, along with, of course, the motherboard, then you can be pretty sure that you can grab one of these processors on launch, assuming there's no shortage, of course, and you will be good to go. And, of course, you won't need to uh, wait with a bunch of parts that you can't turn on while Amazon or whomever you're purchasing a new cooler with deliver your part. Next up, we're going to focus on the platform itself, specifically bootability. So this piece of news popped up on Tom's hardware, and a couple of people are already panicking over this. It was actually appearing yesterday, but I just didn't have time to cover it, to be really honest. So X3, X399 excuse me, supports a bootable SATA RAID, but not NVMe RAID. And, of course, some people are quite concerned about this. And of course, it's not through lack of I.O., because, well, you have 64 PCIe lanes, and four of those are dedicated to Southbridge, though. Uh, remain, so that leaves you, of course, 60 uh, remaining. So once you add a couple of graphics cards, a 10 gigabit Ethernet, and so on, you've still got more than enough PCIe lanes to spare. But according to Tom's hardware, the X399 doesn't give you the ability to utilize NVMe SSDs in a bootable RAID. Now... Accordingly, you can run these with a SATA and boot, but there is no way thus far to boot from an NVMe SSDs together in a RAID 0 array. However, there are a couple of things before we start panicking. Firstly, AMD are looking to enable this feature, but there's no firm timeline. So, for example, if you're purchasing this with the intent of doing this on launch or thinking, well, I'm sure I'm only going to have to wait like a week or so for this to occur, then I've got bad news for you. We just don't know the release date for this. Secondly, it's very unlikely that many people are really going to need this. I mean, the transfer rates already of NVMe are absolutely insane. So... I would probably say this, if this was like a deal breaker for you because you needed this feature, then obviously you may want to hold fire for a bit or possibly go with X299, but if this is something that wasn't even occurring to you, then I wouldn't really classify this as a negative anyway, because once again, a standard NVMe drive is probably going to be more than fast enough for the average user, even if you are in the market for a HEDT type of platform. Next up, some prices for the various motherboards have already started to appear online, and these include Gigabyte's X399 Aurorus Gaming 7, which of course is a high-end Threadripper motherboard. You're looking at a release date of August the 10th, and a cost of $389.99, so let's just say, for sake of argument, $400, US which is quite expensive to say the least, but not really surprising given the platform price and this is roughly of course equal to what you'd expect to pay for an x299 in other words an intel skylake x motherboard it does look a rather lovely design i'm sure some people won't like all of the leds but hey i quite like it aesthetically and finally we have a benchmark which has popped up 
for the 1950X, which of course represents the highest-end SKU from AMD and their Threadripper lineup. So it is, of course, a 16-core 32 thread part, and in this particular instance, they're running at 4 GHz. One can easily see they're scoring almost 3,300 Cinebench uh, points on this is of course Citibench R15. Assuming that this result is accurate and it's not been doctored or anything like that, that's very damn impressive. This is with quad channel memory running on 128 gigabytes of uh, total DDR4 with a clock with a DRAM frequency of uh, 1595, so basically 3200 megahertz. That's very impressive to say the least. Once again, assuming that it is genuine. While I admit AMD, of course, here do have the core count advantage. It's worth noting that this absolutely stomps the performance of the i9-90... Um, I was about to say 1900X, which was completely wrong, of course. The i9-7900X, which scores, at least in our tests, 2350 Cinebench points, which obviously in this instance is significantly slower. Of course, that does just have 10 cores and 20 threads. I say just, it's kind of bizarre to be saying just when we're talking about so many processor cores. But hey, there you go. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.